Hi guys. I wanted to read to you some of my favorite Passover stories. And this one is all about getting ready for Passover by getting your house clean. And it's called Izzy the Wiz and the Passover McLean. And here it is. Izzy the Wiz and the Passover McLean. Whoa, what a machine. I wonder how it works. Izzy the Wiz is so busy he is tweaking with beakers that bubble and fizz, inventing machines that can think, blink, and talk, machines of your dreams that can wiggle and walk. Now Passover is coming. His room is filled with clutter like gadgets and gizmos that whistle and sputter. Come into his world and you'll see what I mean as you watch him inventing a Passover McLean. His mother came in and said, Izzy, please, the, there's some mess all over the floor and I'm starting to wheeze. Look, at, there's the, some bread right here. Oh, and wow. I wonder what that is over there. Looks like some kind of snack. The rooms are still swarming with cookies and bread. That mouse in the corner is nibbling a shred. There's cake in your closets and crumbs in your shoes. Do you blame me for having pre-Passover blues? Don't worry, he said Izzy. It's almost complete. My brand new invention will make the house neat. Go rest, take a snooze, sleep at least until two. When I finish, there won't be a thing left to chew. A squeak and a twiddle and four drops of red ink. A tweak and a fiddle. It's working, I think. His special invention, his brand new machine, a super duper Passover McLean. As he pressed the red button, McLean lurched and whirled. He cranked the green handle and it belched and it purred. And then the hungry machine chomped 10 books for its lunch, gobbled the rug, and it continued to munch. Hmm, did he want it to eat the books? Did he want it to eat the rug? I wonder. The curtains, the shelves, the mattress were fed to McLean who then ate the large chair and the bed. They whirled and they swirled, they curled up inside where the crumbs were all cleaned and the toys were washed and dried. Ah, oh, this machine can clean it too? Wow. Then McLean then completed a quick about face and spit each thing out and put it into place. Izzy checked everything with a back of his thumb. Not a flake, not a cake, not a cookie, not a crumb. Then he tugged and he lugged his machine down the stairs as he parked it right next to the dining room chairs. Now Izzy would clean up the living room too. It would make his mom dizzy what Izzy could do. Wow, what an icy crumbs over here. Oh, look at there's even a donut here. Oh, can't have that in your house during Passover. Oh, it's a whole box of crackers. Oh no, somebody spilled something. Well, I hope McLean can help with that. With a whirl, with a whirl and a purr, the machine started up and a fork whizzed right by, and a plate and a cup. Then a table flew by, and a new cordless phone. Then a desk, a computer, and a paperweight stone. All were blown, all were thrown into Izzy's machine. A pre-holiday feast for the Passover McLean. But oh my, what is this? Smells of smoke reams of steam then a spark it went dark oh poor mr mclean is he wished 
whisked out his turbo light, shined it about, but it didn't look good. Things were not coming out. He would have to tell mother that he really tried. But the living room, sadly, was stuck inside. But wait, not too late. The emergency hatch. As he flipped McLean over and looked for the latch, he pulled out his super knife screwdriver tool. He checked in his book for the malfunction rule. He turned a few screws and he twisted the knife. Then a wink and a blink, the McLean came to life as he pressed the red button, emergency two. Then out of the hatch, the whole living room flew. But Izzy's wide smile sagged into a frown as he watched all the furniture land upside down. The couch with its legs poking straight in the air, he o the overturned table and the upside down chair. The carpet spread out with its rough side on top. The light fixtures hung backwards, all ready to drop. Oh no. What is he going to do? Just then, he heard slippers pad into the room. Oh, Izzy, said mother. She shivered with gloom. He looked at his watch. It was just one fifteen. His mother was too early. She looked at the scene. Oh, goodness, she said. But I must go back in and have a lie down. I can feel my head spin. I thought it was better, she said with a frown, but clearly not well. The whole room is upside down. So she must think that she's dreaming. What a tizzy, thought Izzy. Things couldn't be worse. So his mom left. Izzy jammed on reverse. The reverse did the trick. That McLean was so slick. Turned the whole room right over and did it real quick. The house gleamed and sparkled. The room was so bright. And they sat down to Seder on Passover night. No cookies, no crumbs, said his mom. Not a shred. It's Passover clean, not a speck of real bread. How beautifully dusted, how wonderfully clean. Thanks to him, as he said, as he winked at McLean. So it has a little bit in the back of this book because this is a PJ Library book and I love the explanations. It says the Torah states that all hametz should be removed from the home during the week of Passover. Hametz includes foods made from a mixture of flour and water that is allowed to ferment or rise, such as bread, rolls, cookies, and pasta. Before Passover, many Jewish families do a thorough cleaning to remove all of the hametz. And I thought, hmm, if you don't have something that you can use to clean hametz, you can always make something. Look at what I made. I took a paper plate and I cut it in half. Then I attached a handle to this one to make a dustpan. And I attached a handle to this to make it the broom. Then I added some cut paper for my sweeping. So if you see any crumbs, you can sweep them and help your parents get ready for Passover by getting all the hamets off the floor. Thank you for listening to my story.